So when a writing system relies on a secondary notation system in order for it to even be viable in our modern society, I think that's a red flag that there's something fundamentally flawed about it in the first place. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AB Chinese. This video is going to be more relaxed. It's also going to be an opinion piece, so don't take anything I say as facts. This is just an opinion. You've probably already seen the title, and I want to preface this by saying that I absolutely love Chinese, okay? Otherwise, I wouldn't be on YouTube making videos about the Chinese language and teaching others about it, and I certainly wouldn't be studying it myself if I didn't have an interest in it. But recently, I've been thinking about the Chinese writing system objectively. In the past few months, I've done research and I've made three different videos on the writing reforms of the 1950s, both on pinyin and two videos on simplified characters, which if you haven't seen those videos yet, please go check them out. I spent a ton of time on these videos and I think they turned out great, so definitely worth a watch. But as I was reading about these reforms and like the things that the reformers were trying to solve and the challenges they were facing, it got me thinking that Chinese does have a lot of problems with the writing system. Like you wouldn't reform a language unless you thought there was something wrong with it, right? And you wouldn't really reform something if you didn't think you could make it better and optimize it. So that's how I reached the conclusion that the Chinese writing system is absolutely terrible. Now, before anybody comes and burns me at the stake, let me explain by what criteria I'm judging the Chinese writing system on. I'm only talking about how good Chinese characters are as a writing system, as a tool, as a communications device. I don't care about how beautiful it is, how much history is behind it, any of that. And it really does line up. Like if you think about all the positives that people say about the Chinese writing system, about Chinese characters, they always point to how beautiful it is, how unique it is, how much history, culture, and ancient wisdom there is inside these characters. But nobody ever says that Chinese characters are intuitive. They never say it's easy to learn. They never say it's easy to use. Instead, they complain about how it's not phonetic, how even native speakers forget how to use them, and not just once in a while, but often. So let's just go over some of the problems I see with Chinese characters and why it's a terrible writing system. The biggest problem I see with the Chinese writing system is that it's not alphabetic. Now this may be cool for like Westerners who want to learn Chinese because it's like exotic and like unique. It's one of the last languages on earth that's not an alphabet, but it doesn't change the fact that alphabetic systems are superior by almost every metric, especially in our modern society in the 21st century. Just consider the fact that without pinyin, a secondary notation system, you wouldn't even be able to input Chinese into your phone or your computers. The problem lies in the fact that speech is linear and an alphabet system is also linear. One letter goes after the other and it keeps going along the flow of time, like in spoken speech, but Chinese writing doesn't follow that convention. Yes, each block is a syllable, but the makeup of the block is completely random. There are some rules in the way that Chinese characters are built, but theoretically, they're so free that you could create an infinite amount of Chinese characters. And there's simply not enough rules about where the strokes have to go for you to be able to systematically input it into a computer using a keyboard. So when a writing system relies on a secondary notation system in order for it to even be viable in our modern society. I think that's a red flag that there's something fundamentally flawed about it in the first place. So we can talk a little bit more about how Chinese writing and technology is completely incompatible. Um, there are technically some ways to input Chinese that aren't pinyin. For example, you could use handwriting input, which is just literally using your finger to trace out the characters, but that's super slow. Or you can use wubi input, which, if I'm not mistaken, is based off of using stroke order to input the Chinese characters. But nobody knows how to use that. And the fact that nobody uses it, I think, is a testimony to how in unintuitive and difficult it is to use compared to pinyin or zhuyin. So pinyin is what they use in mainland China as a notation system for the pronunciation of characters. Zhuyin is what they use in Taiwan. But fundamentally, they are the same. When you input with pinyin or zhuyin, which is what most people do, you are basically typing out the pronunciation of the character you want to input, which at that point, the computer guesses what character you meant to input. That's right, the computer guesses what characters you're trying to input. Just think about how ridiculous that sounds. Now, you could say that this problem is diminishing because as technology gets better, especially as AI gets better, Computers and you know even your smartphones are getting really good at figuring out what you mean to say. Just think about how good autocomplete is now for English. It's the same thing with Chinese. It's getting really good at knowing what you mean to type out. 
But this could also lead to a different problem. And that problem is that Chinese speakers now are typing so much on their computers and on their phones that they have forgotten how to write Chinese. Uh, Asian Boss did a great video on this where they went to the streets of Shanghai and they did their classic interview style and they asked Chinese speakers to write out some pretty easy Chinese words. And yet, these people were struggling to remember how to write these characters. This is a real phenomenon. In China, they call it tibi wangzi, which means lift up your pen and forget how to write the character. So if you're struggling to remember how to write Chinese characters, don't feel bad, it really is that difficult. The second big problem I see with Chinese that was a problem even long time ago is the fact that Chinese writing is not phonetic. So if you think about why pinyin was invented, or all the romanizations that happened before pinyin, check out my video on the history of pinyin to learn more about that, then you realize that all of these romanization methods for Chinese were basically created because Chinese characters were not phonetic, so they needed to create another system of writing to record the pronunciations of Chinese characters. The very first missionaries that went to China from Italy, that they learned Chinese there, and they created the very first romanization systems. They didn't do it because they wanted to impose their Western ideology on the Chinese people. They did it for themselves because they had to record how to pronounce all these Chinese words they were learning. They didn't have audio recorders back then, they had to put it in writing. And that's a problem with Chinese writing. Because in most writing systems, it both records the meaning of the word and also the pronunciation of the word, like in, like in English, okay? Although you could argue that not all of these words in English have perfect phonetic representations, but for the most part, a word in English shows you how to read it, how it's pronounced but a word in Chinese does not show you how it's pronounced. So think about young children learning English. When they're learning how to read, they can sound out a word that they don't know. In other words, they don't know this word, but based on how it's spelled, they can take a guess at how to read it, how to pronounce it. You can't do that in Chinese. You see a new word, you don't know what it means, guess what? You also don't know how to pronounce it. This is also one of the reasons why it's so difficult to remember how to write Chinese characters because when you're using a writing system that's phonetic, you can use the pronunciation, the sound of the word, to help you remember how to spell it out. But when you're using a writing system like Chinese that's not phonetic, you cannot use the sound of the character to try to help you remember how to write it. The only thing you have to go by is your memory of what it looks like, the shape of it, the silhouette of it, and try to fill in the gaps. Good luck with that. But the funny thing is, the very fact that Chinese writing is not phonetic may have been the reason why it survived so long in history. So in the context of history, this may have been a positive attribute. And my reasoning for this is because each Chinese character merely represents one syllable and one idea. But it doesn't really matter which idea, you can map it to any idea. This made it extremely adaptable and able to be mapped to different languages. For example, this is why Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese have all historically used Chinese characters for their own languages, even though their languages are spoken completely different from spoken Chinese. And even with the so-called dialects of Chinese, some of which are as different as French and Italian, they all use the same Chinese characters, and they're able to use the Chinese characters because Chinese characters are that adaptable. And this is just my guess, but I think this is the reason why China was able to maintain such large empires at multiple points in history. Think about the Qing Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, or even the very first Qin Shi Huang who united China. This all happened because they had a unified writing system. Unlike Europe, for example, which is extremely fragmented, despite its already smaller size, every nation in Europe or every civilization in Europe had their own spoken language, they had their own writing language, and they drew borders based on what they spoke and what they wrote. But in China, even though a lot of people spoke different languages, at least everybody was unified under the same writing system. And perhaps Qin Shi Huang, who was the first emperor to unify China, knew something about this. Because under his rule, guess what he did? He created a language reform. He created the small seal script, which was a different script at the time, unified the writing system for everybody under his empire, maybe in hopes of keeping it unified. So it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, the non-phonetic nature of Chinese made it really adaptable and survive a long time in history. But on the other hand, it also means that it's very generic in a sense. Like, it's not perfectly suited for Mandarin Chinese. Chinese characters are not perfectly suited for Cantonese. They're not suited for Hokkien. It works for all of them, 
but it's not customized to any of them. So where do we go from here? This is how I see it right now. As many of you know, I practice Chinese calligraphy, but when I practice Chinese calligraphy, I'm not writing Chinese characters as a writing system. I'm writing it in appreciation of the art, the culture, and possibly even the history behind these characters, okay? So I think it's important that we recognize the positive attributes of Chinese characters, the deep meaning, the history, and the wisdom behind them, and yet recognize that purely as a writing system, it kind of sucks. So Chinese characters as a writing system and Chinese characters as Chinese culture and traditional history, whatever, they can exist separately. That's why I support simplified Chinese characters despite most of them being meaningless scribbles because it's a more intuitive system, slightly. I would only recommend you learn traditional characters if you truly want to learn traditional characters for the cultural value of it. Let me put it this way. So a lot of supporters of traditional Chinese will bring up the argument that traditional characters are more meaningful, they're more impactful. Uh, classic example, I hate to bring this up, but um, the character for love in traditional Chinese has a heart component to it, whereas in Simplified, they kind of remove that and doesn't have it. So then they would argue that, well, this character is a lot more meaningful in traditional characters, and in Simplified, it's so meaningless. But you know what I would say to that? If your understanding of love is dependent on how you write the character for love, then I would argue that you never understood love in the first place. <laughs> like, nobody knows the origins behind the English word love, but it doesn't detract from our ability to love or our ability to feel love or understand what it is. So this is really just a silly argument and we should all just put it to rest. Please nobody bring up the heart and love ever after this. I will personally continue to learn traditional characters, but that's only because I want to learn the fullest extent of the Chinese language and culture. But it's not for everyone, obviously. And even though I say simplified Chinese as a writing system is slightly better than traditional, I think both of them are still actually not as good as English. English is a better writing system than Chinese overall, and Korean is probably better than both of them. But again, these are all just my opinions. So if you disagree with them, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, and we can even have a little debate in the comment section. I think that'd be pretty fun. So thank you for watching. I hope this video wasn't too negative or discouraging. I still think... <laughs> I still think that Chinese is an amazing language to study and to learn. So I'll see you guys in the next one. 我们下次再见了，拜拜。